So on a recent episode of the 8-Bit Guy, David restored this vintage 1978 Commodore computer. But he left one thing unfinished. But the more serious problem is actually with the space bar. Um, it works fine if you push the space bar right in the center, <laughs> but if you push it on the side, well, it doesn't work so well there. And that's actually due to a little broken plastic tab, and I've thought of uh, several different ways that I might be able to fix that. So I, I'm going to work on that later because I think I've spent enough time on this <laughs> for the last week as it is, but uh, I think I can fix the space bar too. So David never did get around to finishing the uh, Commodore PET keyboard. As a matter of fact, um, due to space limitations, the PET wound up being stored in my museum. And um, I've tried to use it two or three times over the last uh, couple of months, and this space bar will absolutely drive you insane. And so I'm going to go ahead and fix that today, but stick around. Um, after we fix the keyboard, um, I'm going to explain kind of why the pet is significant to me and give you a little bit of a history lesson. So one of the things that I noticed right off the bat is that the plunger for the spacebar was installed backwards. So this prevents the spacebar from seating correctly. Unfortunately, this will require a complete disassembly of the keyboard. Opening the pet just feels awesome. It indeed opens like the cab of a semi-truck and you can immediately tell the entire machine is built like a tank. Just removing the keyboard from the tray requires the removal of 12 fairly large screws. Comparatively, most modern keyboards are just glued together. Removing the keyboard cable is simple enough. It's just a card edge and therefore a press fit. Before disassembling the keyboard, I went ahead and removed all of the keys. This will make the repair process much simpler when we get to repairing the broken plastic tabs, so I just removed them now. Again, the tank-like craftsmanship requires the removal of 22 screws to release the circuit board. So the fix here is actually pretty easy. All we need to do is lift the key plunger out, rotate it 180 degrees, and then drop it back in the cavity. Then reinstall all 22 circuit board screws. So I noticed something really interesting when I was putting the keyboard back together. The um, caps lock key is not soldered in place. So out with the Weller solder station and helping hands and we'll fix that. That was easy. Okay, so here's kind of what's wrong with the keyboard. Um, so just like any other button um, on the keyboard, the spacebar has one in the center. Um, the problem is if you press on one side, it torques. And so they include this little piece of metal and what that does is it holds the space bar down at the opposite side. So when you press on this side, this side is held down by this piece of metal and that keeps it from torquing. Now the problem with the keyboard is, this goes, so this goes down in here like that in these little slots. The problem with the keyboard is there's supposed to be some tabs right here and right here that hold that piece of metal down when you're pressing on it and they're gone. It looks like they've been actually broken off. So I've got this idea, I've got this, uh, just a little piece of ABS plastic. It's basically the same type of plastic used on the keyboard. And I think what I can do is cut this down and make a new tab. And then using some CA glue, I can reattach that. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Um, and we'll see if that works. Okay, and to finish them off, I'm just going to shape them on um, just a sheet of 100 grit sandpaper, um, get them down to size and rough them up just a little bit so that the glue will stick better.
So there needs to be just a little bit of a nub right here at the end. Um, that will go down in the hole on the keyboard and hold that um, spring wire down. And so I think I can do that with this little um, Dremel tool that TacLife sent me. And um, we're going to try that. I'm just going to hold it with some needle nose pliers and we'll see what happens. Let me see if I can illustrate this for you a little bit better with some graphics. There are two plastic stanchions next to the space bar. The wire fits between them like so. There should be a plastic tab right about here, but it's been broken off and it's now gone. My repair is to create a plastic tab with an overlay that fits on top of this stanchion to give it strength. With a small nub that fits down into the slot holding the space bar stabilizer wire in place. This should be a lasting and permanent repair. So I don't really know how well this is going to show up on camera, but this is the completed clip. And we're just going to put this in with some CA glue. Okay, so we're going to put just a little dab of CA glue right on the back side of this. Not much. It's one of the big mistakes that people make with uh, CA glue is to use too much. And now we're just going to place the tab right down in here. And kind of press it firmly in place. And we'll hold it there for, I don't know, about a minute. All right, and then we'll add the second one on the opposite side. Whoops, that is not at all what I wanted to happen. There we go. Seat that down in there. And then again, we'll press and hold for about a minute. And then we're gonna let this dry for roughly um, an hour or two before we uh, go any further. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half, um, so let's go ahead and put this space bar back on and see how it works. And so there's a little spring that you have to install, and I'll just put that right there, and you're gonna have to kind of compress it, and then we can put the space bar down into the plunger, like so. Okay, works in the center, and it works on the sides. The space bar is repaired. Okay, well the space bar is working nicely. In fact, um, maybe even better than I expected it to. Um, but now it's time to put all of these keys back on the keyboard. But wait a minute, where do they go? Which one goes where? Well, always, always, always take pictures before you disassemble something so that you know how it goes back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the pet back together real fast. And then we'll talk about a little bit of history and why the pet is so important to me. Okay, so having a pet is awesome, but having one with a working space bar is far more awesome. So let me tell you why the pet is so important to me and um, give you a little history lesson at the same time. So Commodore Business Machines actually started out as a calculator company, and later in the late 70s, they bought a, another company called Moss Technologies, which was a chip fab. And um, so they had Jack Trammell as the CEO of Commodore, and then they had Chuck Peddle, who became the chief engineer at Commodore after the uh, acquisition of Moss Technologies. And together, Jack and Chuck said, hey, we've got to get more than just calculators in our product line if we're going to compete. And the TI calculator had just come out and basically dominated the calculator market. And so together, they created the Commodore PET and it was introduced into schools. And this is very important. They, they gave high uh, discounts to education. And because of that, 
the Commodore PET is the very first computer that I ever used, period. Um, it was in my elementary school. We had, I think, a table of five or six of them and all connected to some big disk drives and some printers that are off to the side. And it was the first experience I ever had with computers and it won over my heart. I was hooked on computers from then on. So Commodore then created the VIC-20, which was shortly followed up with the Commodore 64. And the Commodore 64 is the computer that my parents bought me and David, the 8-bit guy. Yes, he's my brother. Um, and this is the computer that dominated our childhood and early teens. And so both of these computers hold a very special place in my heart, as does Commodore. Well, I'm going to go put the pet back in my museum and um, maybe play and uh, write a few little basic programs. On another note, if there were any of the tools that you saw in this video that interest you, including this awesome Pulp Fiction monkey shirt that I'm wearing, I have links in the description for all of those. See you in the next video.